What's the biz, everybody? It's your boy, Baker Maker, a.k.a. Densley, and I'm here to give you some true shit. The holidays are here, and 2023 is almost over. Last year, during the, the month of, uh, of Halloween, I did a top 15 list ranking my favorite Disney villains. So this year, uh, for Christmas, I'm ranking my favorite Disney female characters. So not just, so not just uh, princesses, but women in general. I am including Pixar characters in this, but no Marvel or Star Wars characters. Now, with that said, let's get this show rolling. Despite being more of an even Stevens fan growing up, I did see the appeal of the show. Before Jesse, Hannah Montana, or Good Luck Charlie... Lizzie McGuire was pretty much the IT show for Disney Channel, for very good reasons. It had likable characters and managed to teach new lessons to the young uh, viewers without feeling forced or super cheesy with, with it. In my opinion, a lot of the show's success had, had to do with not only the supporting cast, but also the main character herself, Lizzie. Lizzie's teenage issues helped me helped uh, me as well as my sisters relate to her yes I, I yes even though uh, you know I'm a boy I think it uh, her her issues related you know touched you know stuck a chord chord to to both genders if I'm if I'm being honest you know I um, I even liked the animated Lizzie as well her sassy personality fine maybe it wasn't sassy per se but it was cool made me feel at home within the, the 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 narrative of the show and through a plot device that allows viewers to hear what lizzie is thinking the audience gets a good picture of what it what it means to grow up for both girls and boys hillary duff does a good job portraying her part as lizzie and and her tv uh tv family seems so real to me like they really seem like like they work together as a real family, you know, and you know it's um, and it's a real it's a real shame that um, uh, Hillary Duff and the the the, the, exact, the executives at Disney couldn't work something out to, you know, get that that whole revive that Lisa McGuire revival going, because from what I hear, yeah, those of you who aren't aware, there was going to be a. Similar to how we got a iCarly uh, revival series, we were going to get a Lizzie McGuire revival, revival series as well, but there was too many di creative dif difficulties going on to uh, on both parties to really work together. So unfortunately, the, the project got scrapped. But here's hoping maybe someday they can work something out. Fingers crossed. I love this. I love all the situations Raven gets gets uh, into where she has to wear disguises. I love the voice voices, and I love the way she acts when she's in disguise. I love all the catchphrases, especially "you nasty." This show gave a lot of good messages, especially most specifically are the ones. The one where uh, Raven is told she can't model her dress because she's not thin, thin enough, or, or and, and another where she, uh, Raven doesn't get a job just because she's black. First of all, Raven is a very unique Disney uh, Disney Channel girl because she's not she's not thin or the super super model uh, gorgeous type like Miley. Lindsay before the drugs or Hillary Hillary Duff. However, she's still beautiful in her own way and shows you don't have to look like Miley Cyrus, for example, to be beautiful. Raven is very beautiful. And proves that thick girls are hot, you know? I, uh, I guess she was one of those early examples in my life that, you know, one of my early crushes is where I really like thick women, you know? Um... Besides, I always thought she was just, you know, very big bone anyway. Like I said, she's very, you know, she's thick, you know. And as you know, there's nothing wrong with her. That supermodel look, maybe the ideal look, but 
but it's not the only one, and that's beautiful. As for the other one, I want to say first that this show is awesome because with the exception of Chelsea's actress, it's an all-black cast. Not, not a very common thing for di live Disney Channel shows at the time. It's great that they tackled a lesson about how there are still racist and prejudiced people out there and you need to fight against, you know, you know, bring it out or whatever. Unlike Lizzie McGuire, we got to see Raven's story continue into adulthood as she's a single mother in the sequel series, Raven's Home. Anya is energetic, okay? That's an understatement. And while naive, she's not stupid. I do really like Anya's character, but the real reason she, she isn't ranked any higher uh, than this on the list is because personality-wise, she shares too many similarities with Tangle's uh, Rapunzel. Still, I really like how her story as well as her character in Frozen was written. Similar to Rapunzel, she has spent a long number of years isolated from the rest of the world, thus making her very sheltered. However, it was through Anna's story that the writers of Frozen were able to poke fun at the classic Disney trope of a princess getting with someone they just met in a short period of time because in Anya's case it made a lot of sense why she would do that one of the things that really separates Anya, Anya, Anya from uh, Rapunzel is her awkward awkwardness whether it's her just talking or a lack of good po uh, postures making her a bit of a of a spaz compared to most Disney princesses and in, in Disney films also, I'd like I'd say she's more optimistic compared to uh, Rapunzel. While she she agrees to be a gate enga engaged to Prince Hans at the beginning of Frozen. Uh, not not a complete bad idea, by the way. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> she 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 always thinks about her sister first. Anya doesn't let let love get in the way of family and always puts Elsa before anyone else and she and she gets points for punching Hun Prince Hans in the face that was priceless its sequel Frozen in my opinion gave us a really moving on a moment in which Anya finds herself trapped in a cave and totally alone after watching Olaf disintegrate, disintegrate and realizing that meant something horrible had happened to Elsa. We know Elsa and Olaf are most likely going to be fine because we know how these movies work. The point is that Anya doesn't know this. Her moment of grief is, is written so well that we're, we're able to suspend our disbelief as if we're right in that cave with her, trying to figure out how to survive in a world that suddenly that suddenly changed beyond recognition. This was such a stark contrast to how Anya is usually portrayed. After all, she's she's the ray, ray of sunshine to her sister's ice and snow. The realization that grief and, de, and, de, and de, depression are things that can affect anyone, including the perky princess Anya, is what makes the scene hit a, hit a lot harder. At one point, she even starts to feel hopeless, and I myself have had those moments. So this scene definitely hits closer to home. Luckily, with baby steps, Anya slowly manages to get back on her feet and regain her will to survive. All this while singing the next right thing, which starts off her giving into grief to, to her slowly fighting through it. Now, people can say whatever they want about Frozen and its sequel, but this scene right here will always stick with me and and why I have always come to look at Anya as more than just a Rapunzel knockoff. Yes, Anya, I would most definitely go build a snowman with you.
Cinderella is initially made a servant in her home and is constantly derived by her evil stepmother, Lady Tremaine, and, her, and t- two stepsisters. Although she is abused and humiliated, she maintains hope through her dreams. She, she is faithful to the idea that someday her wishes of happiness will come true. Cinderella is strong-willed and determined. She is pre- presented in the, in the film as a sympathetic heroine, well-meaning, hardworking, and positive. She's seen in a very powering role and finally learns that if you want a dream to come true, you have to, have to help make it come true yourself.